Welcome to the channel, The Secrets of the Universe. My name is Rishabh and this is the third video in the series of quantum mechanics. In the last video, we learned about a debate between Isaac Newton and Christian Huygens on the nature and composition of light. Newton said that light is made up of particles, which he called corpuscles. However, Huygens argued that no, light is not made up of particles. Light is instead a wave a disturbance in the medium just like the sound waves. We also saw how both were able to explain the known facts and features of light using their own theories that is reflection, refraction, rectilinear motion of light, light is made up of different colors and how light casts shadow. It was a matter of choice whose theory you want to choose. If you like the wave model, you choose the wave model. If you like Newton's particle theory of light, you go with that. But since Newton had a higher reputation among the scientists in the 17th century, it was his theory that was preferred. However, in the year 1801, one of the most important experiments in the history of mankind was performed, Young's double slit experiment by Thomas Young. This experiment gave a fatal blow to Isaac Newton's theory of light that light is made up of particles. Before we see what this experiment tells us about the nature of light, and quantum mechanics, make sure you subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so that you don't miss any future videos of this series. The setup of this experiment is very easy to understand. We have a monochromatic source of light S. Monochromatic means comprising single wavelength. Light from this source enters a couple of slits S1 and S2 and falls on a screen behind the slits at some distance. Now before we see what this experiment actually tells us about the nature of light, let us see what we observe on the screen first. When both the slits S1 and S2 are open on the screen, we observe a very strange pattern of light as shown in this image. Alternate bright and dark fringes of light. This pattern is known as the interference pattern. I have also plotted the curve of intensity of the screen on the board. You see there is maxima and minima of intensity at regular intervals. So this pattern is known as the interference pattern we see when both the slits are open. But what happens when I close one of the slits? That is, suppose I close S2 and keep S1 open, so light is only passing through S1. This pattern mysteriously disappears, we no longer see alternate bright and dark fringes, all we see is a single maxima in front of the slit that is open. So in our case, we had S1 open, S2 was closed, hence we just see a single maxima of intensity of light in front of the slit that is open. Same thing happens when we, when we close S1 and keep S2 open. That single maxima shift towards S2. So we have got a couple of observations. That is, when both the slits are open, we see an interference pattern that is alternate dark and bright fringes of light on the screen. When we close one of the slits, we no longer see that pattern. We just see a single maxima of light. Okay, so now we have got a couple of observations. What is the next step? The next step is to see which theory of light better explains the results of Young's double slit experiment. Is it Newton's particle theory or is it Huygens wave model? Let us start with the one that was more famous back then, Newton's particle theory of light. For that, consider a point P on the screen, okay? When both the slits are open, we see that we have a dark fringe on P, that is no particles of light are reaching point P on the screen. But when I close one of the slits, that is, when S2 is closed and light is only passing through S1, I see that a good number of particles of light are reaching the point P. Now why would the particles of light be so shy to reach P when both the slits are open and they do reach P in a good number when one of them is closed? So Newton could not explain the interference pattern. I'll give you another example. Now suppose I draw a couple of slits on the board like this. I name this S1 and this as S2. Your job is to throw indestructible stones on these slits only three things can happen. Either the stones will pass through S1 or they will pass through S2 or they won't pass at all. So behind the slits, your stones should be collected like this. Behind the slit S1, 
these are the stones that will be collected and behind slit S2 like this. Now if this is true for the indestructible stones that you are throwing at the slits, this should also be true for the particles of light that are reaching the slits and are collecting on the screen. So Newton could not explain the interference pattern, he could not explain the alternate dark and bright fringes on the screen. Mathematically, if I1 is the intensity of light that is reaching because of slit S1 when S1 is open and I2 is the intensity of light through S2, then the sum of these intensities is the resultant intensity that is I that is reaching the screen should be I1 plus I2. This is what Newton's particle theory of light says. Now let's go to the less popular theory of light in the 17th century that is Huygens wave model. Classically if you want to describe a particle you just need one parameter its position. Once you have the position you can derive its velocity, acceleration, momentum, energy etc. But if you want to describe a wave you need two parameters its amplitude and its phase. So first let me explain the physical meaning of these two parameters of a wave. Consider a very simple example of a tsunami wave that is going to strike a beach. By definition amplitude is the maximum displacement of a particle on the medium from its rest position. So if we say that the height of the tsunami when it reaches the beach is about say 2 kilometers, we very much mean that its amplitude is 2 kilometers. Graphically we describe a sinusoidal wave like this. So the maximum displacement of the wave of the particles on the wave or the medium is known as the amplitude A. So this is the amplitude, right? Now let's go to the next parameter, the phase. Phase is defined as a wave's shift from having the maximum level at time t equal to 0. So by how much amount the wave is shifted to have the maximum level at t equal to 0 is known as the phase. In fact, the sine and the cosine waves that you are familiar with are just same waves having a phase difference of 90 degrees. They are similar waves just having a phase difference that is 90 degree phase difference. Physically this 90 degrees phase difference means that when one of them is at the maximum the other one is zero. You can see from the cosine and the sine waves when one of them that is suppose here 90 degrees pi by 2 sine wave is having its maxima cos wave has the value of zero. So this is the physical significance of phase. The concept of phase comes into picture when we talk about the sinusoidal waves. It is more relevant in that picture. When we consider light as a wave, we see that this phenomena has a natural explanation. Waves are the one that can pass through both the slits and hence light waves pass through both the slits and they interfere with each other. We see a varying pattern of intensity of light on the screen because the waves reach the screen and they superpose. That is because of the principle of superposition, they show an interference pattern. Now this was the intuitive understanding of the outcome of this experiment when we consider light as a wave. Let's see what mathematics has to tell us. So like I said that we need two parameters to define a wave, the phase and the amplitude. So I consider a sinusoidal wave xi1 that is coming from the slit S1 to be a sine of phi. Xi1 can be any parameter. It can be the electric field, it can be the pressure, displacement, magnetic field, anything. A is the wave amplitude like we discussed and phi is the phase, right? Now consider this, uh, the wave that is passing through S2 by Xi2. A sine of phi plus delta. Now we are considering the waves that are reaching at a particular point on the screen. Delta is the phase difference it arises because waves might travel different distances to reach a particular point on the screen. So the resultant of these two waves will be xi, xi1 plus xi2. So when you add them, a sine of phi plus a sine of phi plus delta, right? So you take a, a common, a 
साइन ऑफ फाइव प्लस साइन ऑफ फाइव प्लस डेल्टा सिंपल मैथमेटिक्स सो फॉर राइट सो नाउ टू केसेस अराइज फर्स्ट इज दैट व्हेन डेल्टा इज एन इवन मल्टीपल ऑफ पाई दैट इज इट कैन बी माइनस फोर पाई माइनस टू पाई जीरो टू पाई फोर पाई एंड सो ऑन दिस क्वांटिटी साइन ऑफ फाइव प्लस डेल्टा becomes nothing but sin phi why is that because sin has a period of 2 pi it means that it repeats its value after 2 pi so it becomes nothing but sin of phi only so xi will be in this case a sin phi plus sin phi which will be 2 a sin of phi right and now the um, when we consider the second case that is when delta is an odd multiple of pi minus 3 pi minus pi pi 3 pi 5 pi and so on xi will become that this first this quantity sin of pi plus delta will become minus sin phi this follows from the basic rules of trigonometry so xi will be a this term will remain as such because there is no delta involved in this term sin phi minus of sin phi because this term will become minus sin phi and hence zero the intensity is the square of these quantities and hence we can see that when delta is the even multiple of pi we are getting a bright fringe on the screen and when delta is an odd multiple of pi we are getting no intensity on the screen a dark fringe this is how we can mathematically using this simple mathematics we can explain the young's double slit experiment right so now there was an experiment that could only be explained by huygens wave theory of light newton's particle model lost its superiority later some of the experiments done by fresnel and fraunhofer further demonstrated the wave nature of light In the year 1860, James Clerk Maxwell, using some of the known laws of electricity and magnetism, theoretically calculated the speed of light, 3 into 10 raised to power 8 meters per second. If you want to understand the physical meaning of the four Maxwell's equations, you can watch my video. The link to which is given in the description. So, if the particle model was dominant in the 17th and the 18th century, wave model had complete control in the 19th century. However, in the 20th century, a series of experiments reopened the issue, and we again had to resort to the particle model of light in order to explain them. We'll talk about those experiments in the coming video. Before you go, make sure you subscribe to this channel and press the bell icon so that you get notified when another video on the series is uploaded. Thank you.